Hi everyone, I know this current project, the Automata project, with the box and the handle, etc. There's a lot of different little pieces and different videos, so I think, I think what I'm going to do is just make one video for the whole project. It might be a little bit long, but I'm going to come up with sort of a, um, a table of contents, so if you need to jump around, you'll be able to look at the bottom of the video, the comment section there. And um, let me just do the whole project in one new file and you can use whatever portion of this file is useful for you to get it done. I'm going to go kind of quickly here, um, but of course you can pause the video at any time. So let's create a new let's create a new uh, document, and I'm just going to call it Automata Project. Automata. That's the box project with the cams and all the stuff. Automata Project. All right, and so I'm going to create it. And I'm um, working in inches, so we're all good here. That's what I have it set at. And, you know, the first thing I'm going to do is draw that box. And so the box's outside dimensions are 10 wide, 8 deep, and 8 tall. Um, and so let's see. Let's put the top and the bottom pieces on the top plane. That way when we import them into the assembly, they'll be in the right orientation. I'm going to look right at the top plane. And these two pieces are the full size. So I'm going to sketch on the top plane, and these pieces, the top and the bottom, are the full size of the box. And so that's going to be uh, 10 inches wide and 8 inches deep. And the wood we're using is 1 quarter inch, so I will extrude to 1 fourth of an inch, 0.25 inches. Okay, there I have the top and the bottom. We're going to have a lot of different parts in here, so let's you know, let's uh, have good practice and rename stuff as we go, top and bottom. I think what I'm going to do is I'm even going to change the color because uh, when I'm assembling it, it just helps to have different colors. You can choose any old color you want. You don't even have to change it, but I do find it useful. I now have a green top and a green and a green bottom. I only have to do it once because I can import it twice to the assembly. I think what I'll do now is close this down. I'm going to um, create a new part studio. And uh, where that was the top and the bottom, let's do the sides and let's put them on the plane that's oriented sideways so that they're, they're in the right orientation when we import them into our assembly. And the sides, um, well, the sides are the full length, which is eight inches. But they're sitting on top of the bottom piece and they're sitting, the side is underneath the top piece. And so this is going to be the full length 8. Now the box is 8 inches tall also, but it's, got a, it's going to have a quarter inch of material above it and below it. So we're going to, we're going to subtract, uh, it's going to be 8 minus a quarter minus a quarter. And so this number here is going to be 8 minus a half, which is 7.5 inches. There's the side. I will extrude it also 1 quarter inch. That's the thickness of the material, 0.25. And I will accept that. Change its color to any old color. I'm going to go with a purple there, a light purple. There we go. Bam. And I'm going to rename it side. All right, so there's um, two out of the three pieces I have to draw. I have drawn, and I'm going to create another part studio. And I'm going to, uh, let's see, I have to draw the, the back of the box, and I want it to be in this orientation. So I'm going to sketch on the front plane again. The back of the box fits inside of the sides and sits on top of the bottom and sits underneath the top. So its dimensions are, it's not the full eight wide because it's got a quarter inch side and a quarter inch side. So it's not, sorry, it's not the full 10 inches wide. It's got a quarter inch here and a quarter inch of material there. So it's 10 inches minus a half an inch, that's 9.5. And again, it's not the full height of 8 inches. It's not the full height of 8 because it's got a top above it and a bottom below it, which of, each of which are a quarter inch. So it's not 8, it's a half inch less than 8. It's 7.5 inches tall. The, the back piece is 7.5 inches tall. I will again extrude it to the material thickness of 1 quarter inch, 0.25er. And there is my back, and I'm going to name it appropriately, back. Alrighty. 
top and bottom sides and back. Um, I do want to change this color to something else. I don't know. Oh, that one right there. Okay, so there's my back. Let's go with, um, well, let's go, uh, let's go with the assembly, right? So what I'm going to do is go into my assembly and I'm going to insert the back once. So back away from it a little bit. I'm going to put in two sides, one there and one here. And I'm going to put in a top and a bottom. Except I've got all my parts. I can look from the side. I like to arrange things close-ish. I don't know why. It just makes it a little bit easier uh, when you do the uh, when you do the fasten constraints. All right. So let's just see what this looks like from the front. Yeah. So these are a little bit off on that axis. They're going to go like that. And maybe that guy should go out here a little bit. So I'm just arranging it so it's easy to uh, do the constraints, the fasten constraints. So um, the big idea here is, you know, you want this sort of outer edge right here to be lined up with that bottom edge right there. So we're going to go up here to the fasten mate. And if we do it properly, we only have to do it once for each side. You've got to be careful to choose this outside edge here. There it is. Let's take a closer look. That's not right. That's the middle. That's the inside edge. That's the middle. There's the outside edge right there. Click on it. And then where do I want that outside edge to be? I want it to be lined up with that right there, that edge. And let's see if that worked. Sometimes it gets funky. That might have been me. Let me go back to this one and just delete it. It somehow just didn't, uh, somehow it did not work out. Right? It's lined up in the middle. I'm not quite sure what happened there. Sometimes it gets funky. I'm just going to delete it and try again. Um, Sometimes I know why I see my mistakes as, as they happen. That one, I'm not quite sure what happened. But anyway, let's try that again. Uh, so I'm going to go with my fasten constraint. I want this outer edge. Okay, I feel like I got that one right. I want that outer edge to be on this bottom edge. And let's see if that one worked. That one did work. So I didn't do anything differently, at least I don't think so. Um, but I have a problem, and that is that when when I made that when that weirdness happened, look, this one got flipped. This one got flipped on its side. I have to rotate this one. Uh, all you do is you grab this whole thing here and you go ninety degrees, nine zero, nine zero, boom. Now it's in the right orientation. So the second time my constraints worked, but I. The first time it had flipped my part somehow. Um, usually that doesn't happen. If it does, now you know how to fix it. And third time's a charm. That's what I hear. I'm zooming in, zooming in, zooming into that edge there. Constrained to that part right there. I think I clicked on it. Didn't seem to take. And let's see how that went. Yeah, that worked out pretty well. So uh, just looking here. Now you can see that is lined up properly. The side is underneath the top. Hopefully the rest of these will go a little bit more quickly. They generally do. I'm not quite sure why, why that got wonky. But it did. So I want this outer edge of that side to line up with this bottom edge of that top and solve it. That one worked. You see, so I'm done with those two. I want, you know, you have choices here, but I want, let's see, I want the outer edge of this purple one to be lined up with this top edge of this one. So let's go in here and take a closer look. That's the middle. That's the outer edge. And I want that to be there, lined up with that one. Solve it out. That's in place. I have... Um, four out of my five pieces in place here and the back I just have to do again this outer edge here this edge here lined up with that bottom edge there let's get in closer make sure we get it right so that's not right that's the middle that's it 
careful don't go too far. If it flips over like that, then you're facing the wrong direction. That may be what happened the first time I did the, with that first piece. All right, so not that part, but that part right there. And I want to line that up with, it's hard to see, but right there. Oh, that doesn't look good. Let's see what happens. Yeah, that, I'm not quite sure what happened there. That's craziness. So that's, did that get fastened? If you can drag, if it drags the whole thing around with it, it's fastened. It is. So I've got to get rid of that. Number four, delete it. Not quite sure what happened, but it looks like it rotated too. So if this happens, yeah, see, it did rotate also. You can just mm -hmm. click on it and then grab that to rotate at 90 degrees. Every so often, I don't know, something like this happens. Um, I want the outer edge of this yellow piece. Turn on my fasten mate. I want the middle of this edge. Am I in the middle here? Yes. I want the middle of this edge there. I want that lined up with right there. That looks better. Yeah. So now I've assembled the box. Okay, so the box is fully assembled. Um, there, I think, uh, so, oh, we haven't turned this in yet. We're good. So there's a there's a there's an assembled box. Okay. So so we've done the box. Now let's go do some cams. Um, I think what I'm going to do is add a folder, and I'm going to call this folder cams. I'm going to go right into this folder, and I'm going to inside of here. I'm going to create a part studio. Um, I'm going to do it slightly different this time. I'm going to do part studios for each cam so I can import them individually. If I don't want them all, I don't have to use them all. Um, I don't know if that's any easier or not. But let's just go with, uh, let's just start with the pair cam. All right. And so the orientation doesn't matter. Um, I'm going to do it on the right plane so when I import it, it's kind of oriented the way I want it. But that's easy enough to flip around as you just saw with those box parts. The pair cam, let's see, sketch, let me see if I can remember this. Boom, I need um, a 1.5 inch circle, 1.5. And then on top of that, I need a circle of half that right here, right there. Make sure I'm in the middle. There we go. I want a half that. Half of 1.5 is 0 0.75, 0 0.75 inch circle there. Okay. And then I just draw some lines that are too long. So let me get into my line tool close to where I want them. That's too long and that's too long uh, purposefully. And I go up here to my tangent constraint. I'm going to make that line tangent to that circle and also make that line tangent to that circle. Same thing with this one. There to there and this line tangent to that circle. And then I get my trim tool and I clean it up. I don't want that or that or that. I'm not sure what that little dot is. Let's see if we can get it. Yep, went away. Um, I do want that. I, I don't want that. And I don't want that. Just cleaning up all this interior geometry that we don't need. And then this and this. And there it is. And uh, we've been extruding these to quarter inch. I don't know. That, 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 you can play with that. Um, zero point. I'm going to make this one a little, ah, whatever. Just keep it a quarter inch. You can change it to 0.3 or 0.4 if you want. Uh, extrude it to a quarter inch. Bang. There's, there's my pair cam in a flash. All I need now is a quarter inch hole in the center. I'm going to go a little bit bigger than quarter inch, though, because I want it to slide onto that dowel without too much friction. I'm going to go 0 0.26, not 2.5. 0 0.26 is the size of that hole, and I will now extrude it to remove the material. See if it went the right direction. It did. We're good. There's the pair cam. Add. Part Studio. Now I'm going to do the eccentric cam. So let's rename this as eccentric cam. And um, again, I'm going to draw on the right plane. 
no biggie if you don't, you can choose your plane. Uh, and I will sketch, and this should go pretty quickly. We just need a two inch circle. Bang, two, bang. There's a two inch circle there. And then we just, I mean, that's the whole thing. We just need a hole. Well, let's extrude it. So let's go ahead and extrude to a quarter inch, 0.25. And now what I want to do is uh, sketch on the surface and I want to circle right, I want it halfway. I want it right here, halfway, wherever that is. So I'm just going to do this. Whoa. I'm going to do that. And it's a quarter inch circle, but a little bit bigger, 0.26. Right? And I want that hole to be dead center between here and here. So this is a two inch diameter circle, so, if, so a one inch radius. So I'd grab my dimension tool, which means if it's a one inch radius, the distance between here and here, if it's going to be in the middle, I'm pretty close, is going to be 0.5 inches. Now that's the right place, and I extrude that, remove the material, make sure it's going the right direction. It is, and bam, there's my eccentric cam. You can make these any color you want. If you want to change colors, of course, it's right here. Eccentric cam. I'm going with another one. Snail cam. Create a drawing. Nope. Cancel. Do not do that. Create a part studio. There it is. And this one's going to be the rename it to the snail cam. And I'm going to draw this. Look, I'm drawing all my cams on my right plane. Look right at it and sketch on it. And the snail cam also starts with a two inch circle. Um, uh, that's a two inch circle too, right? And then we're going to draw another circle, uh, inch and a quarter, 1.25, 1.25-er. I am going to, let's see, I'm going to put a line in here. Um, Just thinking, I'm not, sure, I'm not convinced I need this line. I'm going to click it to there. I'm going to come back down and click it to here and then escape out of that tool. And I am now going to use my three point arc, which is right about there. And I'm going to go from that point there to that point there. And that's the transition between the inner and the outer circles. I'm just going to get it in there somewhere, somewhere close. And I'm going to make it tangent again. I want to make that line tangent to the inner circle. I also want it tangent to the outer circle. That means it's just touching it at, at one spot. Okay. And gosh, that's the most of it. Now we just have to um, extrude it. And, well, let's clean it first and then extrude it. So snip it up. Let's see here. Um, don't want that. Oops, I do want that. I don't want that. That, that I do don't need, and that, and that, and that. Okay, why did that go away? Yeah, there it goes. Um, and that's the, that's the center, I believe. Yeah, that's the center um, of, of this of this part right here. So, so good. There's the outline of the snail cam. Let's just go ahead and extrude it, make sure it looks okay. Quarter inch. 0 0.25er and take a look. Okay, it looks pretty good. Um, we want the hole. Wait, let's, go back, let's go back to sketch one. I want the hole right here. I'm going to do that right now. Put the hole right here, quarter inch, but oh, sorry, a little bit bigger, 0.26. And let's accept that. And there we go. There's a snail cam. And one more, which is the easiest cam of them all. This is Create a Part Studio. This one's called a hex cam. Oops, rename. Rename. This is called hex cam. And bang. And uh, again, on the right plane, I'm going to sketch. I'm also going to look right at it. And I'm going to just choose my polygon tool. I just want it to be six sided. You'll notice that once you click, you can change this number. That's 15 sided. That's four sided. Seven. I want six. That makes it a, a hexagon. 
and I want to make it the right size, and the hex cam, I'm going to give a radius of one inch. So my dimension tool from here to here, it just turned off. No, it's still on. Um, uh, from here, from here to here. I'm, I think I'm going the wrong. So uh, here to here. Okay, that's the that's the diameter tool. That's fine. And so one inch radius is a two inch diameter. Either way, you'll get the same result. And we're pretty much done there. Just going to put a quarter inch circle again. 0 0.26, 0 0.26 inch circle there for the um, the cam shaft. And we're going to extrude this thing by a quarter inch. And there's the hex cam. Okay, so those are four cams pretty quickly. I'm going back into here. Um, and I think what I will do now is the handle or the crank. So New Parts Studio. I'm going to be quick about this. It's just going to be a simple one. I'm going to do it kind of like I did that pair cam. Um, I guess I'm going to do it on the right plane again, just thinking about importing it. Again, not a big thing. Either way. Um, I'm going to draw... I don't know. Gosh, maybe I'll draw, I'm um, just trying to think, maybe a one-inch circle. And then um, arbitrarily, I'm just going to go up here. I'll set the distance in a minute. I'm going to go up here and make a um, maybe three-quarters inch circle, 0 0.75. Nah, I don't like that. I'm going to go with 0.5 here. 0.5. That feels better. I'm going to grab my line tool, and I'm going to go like this, and like this, and I'm going to use my tangent. There are many ways to make a handle. You can do whatever you want, but this is just a suggestion. Here's a uh, crank for your box. Boom. And uh, let's clean it up with the snip tool. Let's get rid of these parts up here. That interior geometry we don't need. Um, we don't need that. We don't need these guys here. And let's see, I want the handle to be up here and the hole to be here. So let's put a quarter inch hole here. Again, just a hair bigger than a quarter inch, 0.26. And uh, let's leave it at this for a moment while we extrude to a quarter inch, 0.25. And that's starting to look a bit like a handle. We just need to put something to crank on it with right up in here somewhere. And so let's just sketch on this surface with a circle tool and just get on that middle line. It kind of doesn't matter where you are as long as you're on that middle line there. And we've got to feel this out here. Um, 0.475 is a little too big. So maybe I'm going to go with, um, I don't know, how much is 0.4? That'll be fine. You know, anything is fine because all we're going to do is that's what we grab onto. We're going to extrude that by perhaps half an inch, maybe 0.5 or so. And, and there's room to wiggle on this. If you want to do your own design, please do. Right? There's a simple little handle. That'll work just fine. If you want to know how I did the clip handle, um, let me know. But I'm just going to leave it at this. And where am I at now? Oh, a rod guide. A quick rod guide. Boom. Create a part studio. And... Um, Oh, look, I didn't name the other one. Let's not get confused here. But this one, this one I'm going to rename as Rod Guide. I'll fix the crank in a sec. Rod Guide. Now I'm going to do it while I'm right here. Part Studio. Yeah, that's the handle. Rename it. Handle. Rod Guide. Again, there's lots of room for movement here. I'm going to uh, sketch on the top plane. And uh, rod guide, gosh, I don't know, I think I'll just do like a um, half inch by one inch kind of thing. So uh, maybe maybe 0.5, 0 0.5 inches there, and about one inch here. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's do this. Let's just extrude it, right? Let's just extrude that out to a quarter inch. That'll be our, sort of our base of our rod guide. 0.25. Let's extrude that to about a quarter inch. We've got a little block of wood, here, a little block here, sorry, plastic, which we can build on top of. Uh, let's go right in here and 
sketch on the surface, grab the circle tool, and so let's find the center. There, if you mouse over, the center point lights up. And if I now go up here, I can find that center point too. As I come down, the second one will light up. There's the dead center here. So that's one way to find the center. The other way is also, you can just do a construction line. So line, toggle to construction. You can, you can do a construction line here to here. And you can do a second construction line of the corner to corner, corner to corner. And there's the center also, right there. Either way to get the center is fine. Get the center. I want a. I want this to be about 0.27, so the rod slides the the dowel, which is a quarter inch, slides up and down inside of it pretty well. And if that's 0.27, well, it needs to have some thickness. So um, we want it to have, um, you know, I don't know what's that 0.3. That's 0.38. Let's go with 0.4. Give it a little bit of thickness here. 0.4. That's fine. And we can now extrude that. Let's see what it does. Yeah, it's just extruding the um, the outer part, which is great. Let's just come up a half an inch or so. Um, and uh, that's good. But I also want to extrude. Make sure I'm choosing the right circle here. That circle. I want to, I want to extrude that circle and remove material. Right? And it's going the right direction. If it, if it ever goes the wrong direction, it goes that way. You just choose this arrow. It flips it over the other way. See, now it's going the wrong way. Uh, now it's cutting through my material. Bam. So there, there's, a, there's, a, there's a quick little rod guide for you. Um, you can make it look a little bit better by just choosing the fillet tool, 0.1 inches, rounding out some of these sharp edges. Just make it look a little bit better. Um, a little bit more professional looking here. And uh, there's my rod guide. I'm done. There's the rod guide. That's, that goes on top of the box. And let's go ahead and start to assemble this thing. Um, well, we've, you know, we've started our assembly. We did the box. Now, this box, oh, we need one more thing. Sorry, we need one more thing. Part Studio. We need the dowel, the, the crankshaft that goes through this thing. Let's do it on the right plane. And that dowel is literally a quarter inch. This is about the easiest thing to draw. It's a, the dowel is, is, is exactly 0.25 inches in diameter, and we're going to cut them to 12 inches. So let's extrude it 12 inches. 12 inches. And um, I like my dowel, since it's made out of wood, I like it to be approximately the color of wood. Double click there, and I don't know, that looks good. I don't know, maybe, maybe that one? That's fine. Looks a little bit like wood now. Okay, make that go away. There's my dowel. Let's rename it properly. Dowel or crankshaft. Let's call it, just call it the dowel. And it's 12 inches long. So, so what we're going to do is we're going to put all the stuff on the box. And we're going to put that dowel right through the middle of the box. We're going to put the cams on the dowel. We're going to put holes up top, etc. And I'm trying to do this all in one video. I know it's getting long, but um, at least it's all in one place here. We need a hole dead center on the sides, and we need some holes on the top for the stuff, the dowel and the rods, etc. So um, let's go to side, back to side, and whatever changes we make here will propagate into the assembly. I'm going to choose my line tool and toggle it to construction. I'm going to choose my line tool and toggle it to construction again, like I did a moment ago to show you the center. Well, here's the center of that side. Escape out of that tool. Draw a 0.27 inch circle so the dowel moves pretty readily inside of it. 0 0.27. 0 0.27 inches and extrude it to remove the material. Good to go. Now check this out. If we go back to our assembly, now our sides have holes. Gosh, they look so small. I am, um, but I put in 0.27, right? Side, oops, side. I just want to double check that. It just looks so small to me, but I think I'm right. Sketch two, edit. I just want to see my numbers, make sure. All right, 0.27, we're good. Okay, um, up on the top, we need some holes too. Where's the top? Top and bottom. Oh. Hmm. 
It's gonna, this is going to put holes on the top and the bottom, but we only want holes on the top. Let's duplicate this. Let's duplicate this. Let's rename this as top. Let's rename this one as bottom. And let me do this. Boom. Uh, that part. Delete. That part. Delete. Import. Insert. Bottom is going to go down here. And, uh, and where's the top? It's not here. Um, it's okay. Let me just do that. Uh, let's go in here. Does it exist? Yeah, there it is. There's the top. Back to my assembly. Insert. There's the bottom. Where's that top? Oh, I think it's down low. I just can't see it. I think it's right there. Yeah, that's the top right there. Uh, this thing won't go up. Oh, oh, oh I've, got a, I've got a scroll bar here. That's not helping me. So I can just barely see it. It is down there. Um, and I'm trying to lift this window up, but it won't go up. It'll only go side to side. That's a little bit wonky, but that's okay. We got it. Um, bonk. And I'm going to quickly fasten those up. Um, I'm going to fasten the bottom. Let's see. Is that right? Yes. That edge goes to this outer edge here. That's good. And let's do the same thing to the top. That edge of that piece goes to the outer edge of the purple piece. Solve it. So, so what I've just done is now those are two parts. So when I go to here, top, and I poke holes in it, I won't get holes in the bottom too. I'm going to, I'm going to look right at this piece, top. I'm going to look right at it and sketch on it. And I think what I will do is grab my circle tool, sketch on that surface. Grab my circle tool, mouse over to find the midpoint. There it is. I'm going to go this way. And I'm going to put a hole of 0.27. I'll put them in the right place in a minute. And I'm going to I'm going to go over here and put another one anywhere. 0 0.27, 0 0.27. And I want, so this is 10 inches wide. So one third of the way over would be 3.33 inches. 3.33, 3.33. So let's do that. Let's take the, the dimension tool and go from here to this edge and call that 3.33 inches. And let's do the same thing to this one. Here to here, let's do also 3.33 inches. That's easy to remember, too. We'll want to know that in a minute. And while we're here, why don't we just extrude those two holes and remove the material, and bam, now I've got two holes in my top, which are centered, and three, centered on this axis and 3.33 inches in from each edge, and also 3.33 inches apart from each other, because 3.33 times 3 is approximately just shy of 10, 9.99. Okay, good. There's the top. Let's go back to the assembly. And look, now I've got holes in the top and the sides. I'm going to bring in, insert, I'm going to bring in that dowel. And I'm going to put it right here. And I think while we're here, I don't know, I'm just going to bring in a couple of my cams. I'm going to bring in an eccentric cam, and I'm going to bring in um, maybe the pair cam too. Put them with each other over here. I'm going to bring in my rod guides. I'm going to, they're going to be up here. Oh, they're so little and cute. There's my rod guides. I'm going to put it right there and accept that. Now check this out. I would like to use some... I want this to be able to revolve when I put it in that hole. I don't want it fixed. So I'm going to find Revolute Mate. There it is, Revolute Mate. I'm going to find the center of this thing right there. I'm going to mate it to that center of that hole. Oops. Mate it to the center of that hole. There. I think I got it. Let's see here. And we want to offset it. Uh, I don't know. Let me take a look, see what's going on here. Yeah. Okay. So it's, um, 
I got two inches sticking out of one side and nothing on the other side. So let's just make it an inch on that side and an inch on that side by going back to our Revolut, editing it, and offset it by one inch. Offset one. Let's see where that gets us. Did it accept? Yeah, perfect. All right, so there's my rod. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, let's see, well, let's fasten these guys down. So I want fasten, and I want the center, get that out of my way. I want the center of this to be fastened to the center of that hole. Same thing with the other side. I want the center of this, where is it? There it is. Center of that to be centered on that hole. Um, oh, <laughs> that's not good. No. So let's, can I just go back, bam? Yeah, good. So um, I think I chose the top of the hole, got centered on the, yeah, so, so that's okay here. Let's go back to fasten. Maybe make more sense to go right here, right? That, put that center of that hole on the center of this hole. That looks better. Got my rod guides in there. We're good here. No, oh, these guys, I, I want to fasten these two. I don't want these to revolve. I mean, they're going to rotate, but they're not going to revolve around the axis. They're going to rotate with the axle. Right, so, so these will be fastened also. So I'm going to go fastened. I want the center of this one's hole to be on the center of that rod. And um, and that's good. We're going to have to offset it. Um, let me just solve that. And, um, well, let's see here. I need to I need to offset that. So I have to I have to edit fasten five. Yeah, fasten five. I want to offset it. Well let's see, it's one inch to here and then another three point three to the hole. So let's do um uh, three point three three plus one. Four dot three three. Did I get it? Yeah, four dot three three. And and if you click outside of the number field, like up here somewhere, oh it, it's on the wrong axis, right? So that's the z, that, that's x axis. Must be Z. We're talking about Z. So let's undo that. Put the zero back in there. Let's probably just hit the back arrow. Right. I don't want X axis. I want that to be zero. I am. Um, this is going to be Z axis. It must be Z. I'm going to go with 4.33 here. I'm going to click outside of that field, see which way that takes me. Yeah, good. Look, it's right underneath there. It's, it went, went one inch in, and then 3.33 more. It's right underneath the guide. And, oh boy, here come some students. And I'm going to do the same thing with the other cam. I'm going to fasten that hole to the center of that rod. And I'm going to offset at 4.33. Let's see how that looks. Oh, goodness. Oh, Houston. We have a problem. <laughs> what in the world just happened? Well, let's go to that button. Let's go. I, I must have chosen something weird. Um, no, one of them was good. That one, no. Mm, I'm going to go here. I don't know why that just happened. I'm going to just try that again. Okay, so let's see here. I'm just going to try that again. I'm going to fasten... To fasten this that I'm gonna fasten that to there and I'm gonna offset it well this one I'm gonna do 4.33 I'm gonna do 4.33 um, Plus another 3.33. So that that sounds like um, 7.66 on the z axis. 7.7.66. 7 
7.66 inches on the z-axis, and it went the wrong way, so I'm going to do negative 7.66 and see where that leaves us. Bam! Right underneath the guide, and we just have to fix that other fasten, which was fasten 5. Um, I'm going to edit fasten 5, and I'm going to offset it. Let's see. Uh, 1 plus 3.33 is 4.33, 4.33, let's see if it goes the right direction, it did, so now it's underneath there, and um, let me see if everything's lined up, why don't we leave it at this, I have a class coming in right now, and um, it looks like everything's lined up so far, we just now have to, we can make a short video next time to get the rods in here, might have to make a little adjustment, but it looks like we're pretty good here. We have the cams on the camshaft and the rod guides attached, the box is assembled, the dowel's in place, and it's also uh, all very beautiful looking. So, that's that. And um, I will try to annotate this below for the YouTube video so you can skip to any part that you need. You don't have to watch the whole thing because, boy, it's getting long. Alrighty, take care. See you guys soon. Bye.